Today, my humble plea is to those of you who are cool. Hey, am I speaking your language yet? Thank you for congregating all together. Because just by watching this video, you must be super duper cool. <laughs> You know, my intros are kind of long, so if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments. Tell me how long my intro should be, five seconds, one second, and then go straight into the info because I want to front load information for you guys. But before we go too far, my name is Andrew. I'm a data scientist, mentor, and coach here in Silicon Valley. That's Professor Meatball. He is a doctorate from the University of Cornell with a specialty in gradient descent. Because he has a big nose. Today I'm going to tell you how similar I am to Clement Mihalescu, Mihalescu, Mihalescu. He is known as the founder of Algo Expert. He is the millionaire, 25-year-old YouTuber who is talking a lot of information, a lot of useful information at that about the technical world and his startup something that helps people get into that technical world. Very admirable. He also tells the fact that he has learned software engineering in six months. And that's something that kind of fits into my aesthetic, six figures in six months. So you have to start somewhere. And usually where you're starting is with no programming language. That's why I wanted to talk to you today about finessing a non-technical internship my junior year. Since that was the year I first started coding, I couldn't be qualified for a technical internship. So therefore, I had to go and get a business intelligence or business development internship. And that is the crux of a six months journey where I went from entirely non-technical stakeholder to the bridge between technical and the non-technical. And I want to tell you exactly how you can leverage non-technical internships as well as other experiences if you're looking to pivot or if you're looking to be able to turn around your career in six months. By the end of this video, you're going to understand the vague world of business development and other non-technical internships and previous experiences that you can leverage. And you can answer the question like, how does this affect my resume? How do I build a technical portfolio and how do I smash the heck out of that like button so that we can defeat the YouTube algorithm together? If you like it and then people watch it, that is just going to help all of us build a more tightly knit community and join the Discord down below to talk to me directly. That's probably the fastest way. When we talk about business development, we have to think about the age old history of people who are not quite the salespeople. They're not going door to door and trying to hit up a lead. They're not quite the person who has to understand a brand and understand the customer from the inside out. And finally, they're not the person in the back end with a specialized skill, someone who can build out the website or build out the data pipeline or build out an HR database full of people to hire and people you don't want to hire. Business development lies in that intermediary step between gopher, like business gopher, someone who runs around and does a specific task that needs to be done that no one really has a specific role for, or something very specific, something tantamount to a crucial task in a company. But it still doesn't really fit a uh, definition by design. So in business development. <laughs> First off, would I suggest a business development internship? No, don't do it. Why? Because it is all the vagueness of a data scientist role, something that people really can't put their finger on in terms of how technical or what proportion of your work was actually dedicated to a specific craft, to a specific specialized skill. So you have to fight that uphill battle. Business development is one of those experiences that can make a resume reader auto reject your resume. And that's something to consider greatly. Depending on what actual skills you exhibited and what actual work you were able to do at a company, Try to make a case to your employer that your skills were actually more exemplified of an analyst or a data scientist. So that's the very first tip. Work with your employer to try and change your title, especially if it's an internship and it's a relatively small company, or perhaps they're a big company with a relatively new internship program. When it comes to a company trying to build out their internship program, they're just trying to get better interns through the door. They're trying to show proof of work that their internship program is actually something worth putting your time into as a prospective intern. How do you know if you have a case to ask your employer if you can change your title to something more technical? Well, let me talk about my specific situation. I was a business development intern my junior year in a medium sized startup in Shanghai, China. At that point, I was not yet an American citizen, so therefore I could easily move back and forth and actually travel all of China with my family, but that's besides the point. 
at that point, I didn't realize that tech internships, especially FANG internships, can pay really well. You're imagining that you're probably getting paid 50 bucks an hour if you're a fan of Trent Red or Chen Black, as he's usually known on the internet. He has recently gotten a FANG internship, but my internship was unpaid. Well, unpaid by the startup. They were a Y Combinator startup. They were incubated in my university, the U University of Chicago. Uh, so that's why their connection with the university allows a specific stipend program to give me a $5,000 stipend. So for the entire summer, not including my airfare, not including my housing, not including my food, I've got $5,000 to spend. And that barely covered the airfare, the food, and the housing. The startup was a website template manager, something that allows you to build your own website with ease, something like Squarespace or something like Squarespace. I can't think of the other ones right now. <laughs> When it came down to it, that company probably was not the right size for a data scientist anyway. So that was a non-starter. But they did want business development interns to come on and see what they could do. It was a startup. It was my first internship at a startup, so I was deluding myself into thinking that I was under a technical internship. It was not. There was to be no scripting. There was to be no data pipeline management. There was to be barely any whiteboarding or any actual technical startup stuff. So that's the second point I want you to take off of this video is that don't delude yourself by being adjacent or analogous to a technical position. A role like an analyst is not adjacent or analogous to a data science role in most companies. Those two roles are almost entirely separate. And those two positions are almost never intersecting in terms of communication for most companies. Same thing goes for a business development role or something similar. That kind of role will almost never intersect with a technical role, a software engineer role. You're not just going to rub off and start scripting all of a sudden and learn the technical skills you need. So therefore, it is actually a step back if you want to become more technical. When I was tasked with my business development role, I got very little guidance, actually. And that's something that you should expect from most internships. Even in software engineering internships, when they're paying you 50 bucks, you know, 60, 80 bucks an hour just to get out some kind of training so that they can get you loyal to the company and have a successful return offer accepted, that actually might end up still pretty unguided. Usually an internship at a software engineering level or a data science level is project-based. You want to be able to build your own project or perhaps take the lead from mentors and your manager and understand that your summer is a sprint, a long sprint, be it, but you have something to accomplish at the end of two months, three months, or perhaps an academic year. Not so much with non-technical roles. In a non-technical role, you are much more likely to have your time value of money be far less. Uh, for the company's sake, uh, they were paying me nothing. So they were happy to just have me get coffee sometimes or make me go run down the street and get a red bean bao or to get some boba for them. You know, this wasn't my job. You know, I was happy to do it. But at the moment, I could tell they had some software engineering internships and those interns definitely weren't doing that. I made an entire video about dignity and your time value at work, as well as your workplace trying to manipulate you to understanding that, you know, you might be a family member and you should treat them like family, but this is a mixed blessing. So the third thing I would say is if you have a vague understanding of success at your company and they're trying to just pigeonhole you in a bunch of different miscellaneous tasks, try and automate, try and build out pipelines as much as you can so that an Excel macro that you're supposed to write actually becomes a Python or SQL script that you can make very fast, run automatically with a cron job or maybe something in Selenium. And now you have made your non-technical role technical. You did it. And if you wanted to find out how, it really just takes maybe a weekend of going down the YouTube rabbit hole of how cron job, Selenium, and Python works. It's not gonna take just a weekend to understand every single piece of the code. Do not think that theoretical learning is the same as practical implementation. But if you can implement, you are doing 80% of the job of a data scientist, Googling and copying code. One thing that Clement agrees on, he even made an entire video about, is that the most important skill a technical person, a software engineer, a data scientist can have is to be able to expertly copy code, find out what is good about a code, find out what works and find out what will work for this specific project or problem that you're currently having. While you're at this internship, especially, especially if you're not working on proprietary information, if you're actually working on maybe creating content, which is something that I was tasked with creating how to videos on how to use the product, make sure to start building a social media platform for yourself. Does that mean start checking in on Foursquare or 
adding Tom as a friend on MySpace? No, not exactly. I mean to start building a Medium account, start blogging, start putting your projects and the other technical ways you'd be able to automate the non-automatable usually for business development positions or non-technical positions in a blog so that recruiters can find you in the future. So they can start trailblazing the path for other non-technical people. Let me tell you the reason why. The fact is a lot of people are just like you overworked. They don't have a lot of time on their hands because they're constantly trying to chase the small amounts of entertainment uh, in Netflix or a can of beer or unwinding at nighttime. If you can start hacking your behavior so that blogging and creating YouTube videos perhaps is your entertainment, then you can start being a better version of yourself by one, getting recruiters on your social media. So then the next time they do research and dig into your application and your name, they just try to Google your name. Your first thing that pops up is all the useful information that you've been able to provide the internet. So that's something that is beneficial for you. The next thing is that it's really beneficial to the community of people that you've been able to learn from. Remember being an expert copier of code? Well, who do you think wrote all those help articles? Who do you think wrote all those stack exchange comments and all of the answers that ultimately got you to where you are? Start putting it back into the community. Start building out the timeline for which you becoming a more technical person. And ultimately that is a compelling story that a recruiter can look up before they even consider your application and especially before they auto reject your application. At the end of the day, my summer was full of trying to understand how to film myself in a compelling way. Uh, I didn't really become a YouTuber out of it. You know, it, I put videos on YouTube of how to use the product. Uh, and it was painful. And I wasn't really tasked with this project. It was my manager talking about the idea that, you know, you could do this non-technical video making project. And I said, yeah, that's a concrete idea. Let me jump on it. By not having any ideas of my own, I had to accept all of the non-technical ideas because I was a hard worker. I wanted to do something this summer that contributed to the company. That's the last thing that I'll leave you with. Don't conflate the idea that you doing a good job for the company is you doing a good job for your own portfolio and your resume. Now at the end of the day, that project is something that I cannot talk about, right? I cannot bring up in an interview that I just made YouTube videos all summer, uh, really bad ones where I don't even show my face and I'm just showing people how to use the product uh, because they wanted to SEO their brand and they wanted a business development intern to do it. If I sat down a couple weeks in advance and wrote out all of the technical things that I could do for the company and then made it my number one goal to pitch one of those ideas as a technical possibility for my capstone project that summer, then I would be able to talk about it to this day. Unfortunately, I didn't go into that internship with much of a plan. Just know that you're not the only one. Most people who run internship teams are probably not thinking that much about you. They're probably just thinking about their bottom line. They're thinking about how they can make their own portfolio seem better. It's the curse of having to climb that bureaucratic managerial ladder. They need to see output from you. And they're probably not thinking too hard about how that's gonna affect your career trajectory in the future. I shouted out Trend Black in this video. If you wanted to be shouted out with your brand in a future video, then you know what to do. Screenshot this video, put it in your Instagram stories, and then Tag me, Andrew Mo Money, so that I can see it for you to win a chance to be featured in the next video. Today's trivia question is about SQL. Why do window functions exist? What purpose do they serve over just the simple aggregations that we can do with group by? Leave your answer down below. I'll collect some of the right answers and I'm gonna give away a free consultation. The last consultation I gave was to Diane White. We chose to talk about data science. You can choose to talk about anything you want. And if you wanted to talk about meatball or sports, or I don't know anything about sports, please don't talk to me about sports. Uh, unless it's D&D. <laughs> As always, for now, but not for forever, I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace. Wants love. You want love. You want love. We all want love.